Hello and welcome Silver Star Nation fans. It is that time of the week and actually the final time this season that we will be talking with the man, the myth, the legend, Mickey Spagnola. Thanks for joining us, Mickey. And first off, just got to start all encompassing. What are some major keys the Dallas Cowboys need to address this offseason? Well, first and foremost, uh, they need to get uh, Dak Prescott signed to a long-term deal. And I can put it on the other side, too, and Dak needs to sign a long-term deal. I don't think he wants to go into another year on a one-year deal uh, with no security in the future uh, after seeing what could have been even worse this year with his season-ending injury. So I think that's first and foremost. Uh, second, they got to get that offensive line healthy. Uh, they expect those three guys, uh, the three starters that they missed, uh, to be back healthy, ready to go next year. Tyron Smith, Zach Martin, Leo Collins, uh, get those guys back. Uh, I think that'll solve some of the problems they had offensively. And then they got to concentrate on the defense. Uh, they need to upgrade the personnel. And you name the position, and I'll tell you they need it, right? <laughs> Defensive tackle, linebacker, cornerback. Uh, they, they need to upgrade the personnel. And then I think they need to do a better job of fitting your personnel uh, into, you fit your scheme into the personnel, not the, what they tried to do this year. I think that was a major flaw in what they tried to do on a new staff. Yeah, you talked about Dak Prescott, and come March there's going to be a lot of unrestricted uh, free agents. Who do you think they need to pick back up for next season? Because there are quite a few that could leave. You mean on the, on the, with the Cowboys? Yeah. yeah. And a lot of that uh, will be determined by market value. Yeah. You know, you can say, gosh, I really want Chitabe Awuzie back as one of my corners. Uh, but again, what would somebody offer him? You know, sort of like last year with Byron Jones. Mm -hmm. They wanted Byron Jones back, but they couldn't afford what Miami uh, offered him. So a lot of those things on those guys trying to get them back uh, will be determined uh, by market value. You know, Jordan Lewis is a free agent. Xavier Woods is going to be a free, unrestricted uh, free agent. So those are kind of the main guys that they have to take care of or try to if they want them back and if they can afford it with a salary cap that's going to go drastically down because the NFL's loss of revenue uh, during this season with most of the teams not having any attendance whatsoever at home games. Yeah, so you touched on defense. Obviously not a good year for the Dallas Cowboys, but do you think that's really where they're going to go head on into this draft, this upcoming draft? Well, I, I think, you, you know, just like this last year, that was the idea, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then C.D. Lamb fell in their lap in the first round. <laughs> no problem there. And then they concentrated on defense, right? Second round pick, Trayvon Diggs, ends up being your starting corner. Third round pick uh, was Neville Gallimore, ends up being... Uh, your starting defensive tackle. And late in the fourth round, they found Tyler Biotish. He's going to be your starting center next year. They developed Donovan Wilson uh, as one of your starting safeties, and I think, uh, I think everybody saw the impact he was making. So now, what can you add? You know, can you get a big body defensive tackle in there, another linebacker, and as I said, cornerback? So uh, I think between those positions, uh, and where they're picking in the first three or four rounds, uh, you should be able to find s some quality. And then the other thing I think that they probably learned is they need uh, to either find or develop a better backup offensive tackle uh, because they lose their starting two tackles. The next guy, Cam Irving, they lose him, uh, and now you're playing a backup and a backup to the backup. So mm -hmm. I think depth on that offensive tackle position uh, has to be something they address. Yeah, and then also getting Kellen Moore back, though, continuity, great. And uh, offensively, Cowboys didn't look bad. How big was that for, for Dallas? Yeah, I think that was huge. Uh, I think that, obviously, they wanted him back. Uh, and, and as I tell folks, you know, uh, there's no salary cap for your coaching staff, so whatever you want to afford. Uh, and, and, you know, and I think he, he understood that maybe he wasn't quite ready to be the head coach of an entire program, uh, especially one that's kind of prominent like Boise State, even though he's the hero over there still. Uh, so, yeah, getting him back, he's worked so well with Dak. Uh, I think Mike McCarthy uh, recognized that. Jerry Jones recognized that. Uh, so get him, getting him back uh, is a feather in their cap. Yeah, and then finally, uh, Mike McCarthy, obviously, 
Um, do you think he's feeling the heat? I know it's his first season, but um, just talks around the team, and um, obviously I've heard stuff from fans. Um, do you think he's feeling any heat going into year two? No, I don't think so. And, and fortunately for him, uh, the fans don't make that decision, <laughs> exactly. right? They can give all the heat they want, and that's <laughs> what fans do, by the way. Yeah, of course. Uh, but no, uh, I, I think he's heat on himself that he wanted to be better. He certainly didn't have any expectation to come here and finish 6-10. and 10. I think there was extenuating circumstances uh, on why that happened. It's never a good recipe to have to play four quarterbacks or start four quarterbacks during a season uh, and that many different guys on the offensive line. So I think it was a combination of things, but, you know, he, he, he's, he's learned. Uh, I think he learned after his first year in Green Bay when they went 8-8. Eight and eight. You know, they were 4-8 and eight and won their last four games. He almost pulled it off again winning their last four games this year. Uh, so uh, he, he's a pretty tough guy, uh, and, he, and he's got a pretty tough skin. So I think the players developed a pretty good uh, respect for how he stuck with them and kept grinding away trying to salvage a season that looked lost uh, at the halfway point, heck, at the three-quarter point when they're three and nine. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Mickey. Uh, it's been a pleasure, and see you next year. Good to be with you, Jared.